change the course of the past. I'm a member of the Columbine community and the tragedy at our high school. After that occurred, the vice president came up and said, all of us must change our lives to honor these students. And that had a profound effect on the direction of my life. I've been a hockey coach for many years at all levels, and I started a hockey club at Columbine High School. And I met students who fell into three categories of what they wanted to do after high school. They wanted to go into the military, they wanted to go off to university or college, and they wanted, or they wanted to serve or serve their community in some vocation, stay in the community and raise their families. And I saw those opportunities going away for those children. And in 2002, the Republicans took over the House, the Senate, or already in the White House. And for those who predicted that our country would go in the wrong direction, our worst fears were confirmed. A war of choice. We're not leaving a more peaceful world, a more just world, and a more livable world. The problems that faced this country when I was a kid, back in the 60s and 70s, haven't been solved. The very problems my parents spoke to me about. You know, I joined the Marine Corps in the 70s when it wasn't popular to do so. I was the only one in a military program in my college for three years. I was lucky enough to go off to flight school. I flew fighters for over 20 years in the Marine Corps and learned about the great responsibilities of the United States all over the world. I taught national security strategy. And when I got off active duty in 1991, I'd been involved in nuclear weapons and other sorts of programs. I became an airline pilot. I've been an airline pilot for about 20, almost 20 years now. But I volunteered for duty in uh, Bosnia through combat missions there as a reservist and left Colorado to do that. And as I said, I never aspired to be a politician. But here we are in 2010, and in 2008 I decided to run for Congress. And I feel like I can represent all of the people of our district. I understand matters of security, of rights, of prosperity, and how to move this country forward. And I'd like to talk about my agenda as we go along through the presentation. So thank you. In his first term in Congress, he's actually stunned by what he's finding in Washington, D.C. As most of you know, uh, our country desperately needs to be put back on track. Congress controls the purse strings, not the executive branch. And in, in 2007, when Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid uh, took over the leadership of Congress, the national debt stood at $8.6 million. Today it stands at $13.5 trillion. I'm sorry, the national debt before was 8.6 trillion. Today it stands at 13.5 trillion and is rapidly rising. 15 million Americans are unemployed. And unfunded liabilities that we're leaving our children and grandchildren are, are just drastically wrong. This is one thing Mike talks about pretty passionately is the deficit and the debt. The deficit this year uh, the difference between government tax receipts and expenditures, the deficit alone is $1.4 trillion that we're adding to our national, our federal debt. And in 2007, one of the things he likes to talk about is the ratio of debt to gross domestic product, GDP, stood at 36%. That was only in 2007. Now it's already at 62%. Some congressional estimates uh, project it to be 110% by 2025. Now many of you know what happened to Greece just recently when its national, uh, when its financial meltdown was at 110% of debt to GDP. We're in a terrible crisis in our national government, especially with debt and spending, and that's one thing that he's working on as he's formed the first bipartisan balanced budget amendment in the history of the Congress. He's got a Democratic co-chairman, Jim Marshall from Georgia, and they're working on trying to limit the spending of our Congress. He, Mike Kaufman also believes the best way to stimulate the economy is not by increasing the cost of doing business in this country and enlarging our government. He believes that actually injecting money into the private sector through tax relief and unregulating some of the business environment will help create jobs and economic opportunities. Lowering marginal tax rates have worked in the past and will work again. Uh, the last thing I wanted to share with Mike in my opening was that both parties, he believes both parties have had their fingerprints on a lot of the problems that we face today as a nation, Republicans and Democrats. 
and he will, if Republicans uh, gain power again in the House this election, he will only stand with them if they stand for limited constitutional government and conservative principles. That's what he ran on in 2008, and that's what he's running again on in 2010. One of the things Mike is passionately working on is the uh, Bipartisan Balanced Budget Amendment Caucus, and he would uh, continue to work on that. The purpose of the caucus is to get House Joint Resolution 1 passed, so he's a driving leader in that effort. The first bill he would also work on is the Rare Earth Supply Chain Technology and Resources Transformation Act. It's a long, it's a long bill. Basically, what his concern is, uh, we. The U.S. is nearly 100% dependent on imports for vital materials and rare earth elements. And he feels like this is a real national security issue, and we need to figure out some ways within our own country of mining these rare minerals. A lot of these uh, minerals we can only get right now from China, and there's a worldwide uh, growing demand for them, and uh, they're critical for our weapon systems. The other bill he let me know about that he would be uh, working on is the National Guard Employment Protection Act, which would give members of the National Guard the same reemployment rights that right now are already given to members of the reserve. So he feels like that's an important thing that he can do for members of our military. Uh, yeah, um, I, I think that the first two bills that I would work on and I've already proposed are two of my major proposals, and they have to do with the importance of creating jobs in our economy in the short term and over the long term. And I agree that the national debt is the biggest threat to our economy in the long term. My first proposal I call BRICS, Bonds that Rebuild and Invest in Our Communities. Uh, in this program, in individuals will be able to invest up to $10,000 of pre-tax income into municipal bonds in their community. This would be a local uh, driver for, to build schools and other infrastructure projects. It would also be a, a fairly substantial tax cut for those in the 36% tax bracket who invested directly into their community. After holding these bonds in their community for over a year, they'd have a $3,600 tax savings. So it's a major uh, tax proposal and, and investment into our community. And I will say, if the Bush tax cuts were to expire for anyone, but for those who, under the President's proposal, would make more than 250 a year, everyone who makes $400,000 a year or less would not experience a tax increase if they invested in program. The second bill I would introduce, I call Congressional Incentive Pay. I would cut Congress's pay by 5% in every session in which there's a deficit. I introduced uh, the idea in August, and uh, just a few weeks later, uh, my opponent introduced a bill in Congress to cut, uh, cut Congress's pay. My bill is an incentive to bring people to the table to solve the deficit problem. I'm not opposed to a balanced budget amendment, but I think it kicks the can down the road. It doesn't deal with the problem right now. We need people at the table solving the problem, acting on the debt commission's uh, recommendations immediately, and dealing with the debt now. Um, the Republican pledge that just came out last week will bankrupt the country. We're not going to touch the Fed's or Medicare, but we're going to cut taxes. There's no such thing anymore as across-the-board tax cuts. There's just tax shifting onto our children. So we need to deal with the debt now. Standing here and saying you can't cut defense, you're not going to cut Medicare or Medicaid, you're not going to cut any entitlements or defense, and you're going to balance the budget is absurd. <laughs>